This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 19 of Equestrian Legends, presented by Pessoa. Hello, I'm Chris Stafford, and my guest this week is Brazilian show jumper, coach, breeder, and founder of the Pessoa brands, Nelson Pessoa. Nelson Pessoa Filho was born on December 16, 1935, in Rio de Janeiro, one of four children of Nelson and Antonieta Lemos Pessoa. Despite being nervous with horses as a child, his father encouraged him to pursue riding as a career and he became one of the first Brazilian civilian riders to excel in the sport that had until that period been dominated by the military. He made his debut in international competition in neighbouring Argentina, but it was an opportunity to move to Switzerland in the early 60s that launched him into the spotlight as a talented horseman and competitor. He rode in five Olympic Games and nine World Championships, His first Olympic start was in Stockholm 1956, when he was just 21 years old. Other career highlights include two gold and one silver medal in Pan American Games, becoming European champion and four times Brazilian national champion. He was a master of derby classes, winning the prestigious Hamburg Derby a record seven times and the Hickstead Derby three times. His international career also includes over 150 Grand Prix wins in Europe and 100 puissance competitions. Among his well-known partners were Grand Geste, Vivaldi, Nagier and Special Envoy. His instinct with horses and profound understanding as a horseman, combined with his skills as a rider and competitor, have garnered respect by his peers the world over and the admiration of his many fans. He is revered wherever he goes and considered a legend in his own lifetime. His skills as a coach are evident in the success of his son, Rodrigo. Nelson has a small breeding operation in Belgium. He is the founder and owner of Pessoa Brands, and he lives with his wife, Regina, in Brussels, Belgium, and they have one grandchild. Well, Neko, it is a pleasure to have you on the Equestrian Legends show. Thank you so much for joining me. That is my pleasure. Now, catching up with you in your home in Belgium, living in Brussels right now, and uh, obviously as busy as ever with your coaching and with your breeding business and with, of course, your Pessoa brand of products. I want to talk about all of those things. But first of all, let's get a sense of what Neko does in a typical day now, because you don't ride as much, do you? No, no, almost not at all. Since 10 years when I stopped competing, well, in the beginning I have, um, I have uh, keeping some activity on riding, but now I'm I traveling to follow my students and to follow Rodrigo and his competitions and our team. So and then I, uh, little by little, I lost uh, a bit of the interest in on riding. Yeah. Well, you certainly do keep busy. I want to talk a little bit about your product of Pessoa brands of saddles, of course. Yeah. And, uh, you have, what, I think 13 different designs of, for jumping and several for dressage, as well as, of course, the bridles and, uh, and, and the many yes. accessories. Was this your idea, Neko? Yes, yes. I am... Um... On my beginning of my career, uh, 1960, when I arrived uh, in Europe, I, I got I got a, a very interesting on uh, on uh, the several business, and uh, because I try I, I try first to manufacture one saddle for myself, the saddle that existed in this time in the 60s was a little bit. Uh, Heavy ones that was the French saddles Danlou, or the the famous Hermes saddles Ten Kraus or Doriola, that was very flat. I tried to get something in between, and then uh, so in the end is the, the, the saddle that everybody uses now. And with the time, the industry of the leather developed a lot. So. Uh, 
we we really can't uh, say that uh, uh, the different saddles that exist now in the market are very comfortable for the rider. And then uh, and straightway, I I bring my type of saddle to to Hermes. So Hermes developed for for ten years, and then uh, and then I have uh, the honor to have uh, uh, the Pessoa saddle. Uh, manufacturer and sold by the house uh, MS has the Stan Kraus saddle and the Pierre Doriola saddle. And uh, later on, 10 years after, uh, I didn't have uh, one commercial agreed with the, with the MS. And then I do my, my, my only way, my own way, bring the saddles, uh, bring the model to England. And then uh, we manufactured this saddle in England, in Walsall, uh, in one of the factories there. I have a lot of factories. And then I have been on the market for a long time. And uh, later on, I get associated with the Talar Barteria Diaz in Argentina. And then uh, they begin to manufacture the saddles in Argentina. So clearly this is something that you enjoy. The brand of Pessoa is legendary around the world now. You have an enormous market with these products and you have a wonderful shop window in, of course, uh, Rodrigo is out there competing and many other riders with these saddles all the time now. Yes. Uh, does he get involved with you with the business at all? Uh, well, no, Rodrigo, more or less, more or less. Uh, uh, of course, well, he rides with the saddle, and then uh, so every year uh, we try to um, to bring some uh, some changements and uh, make the saddle better and better. Because uh, when we change, my saddle was uh, let's say the first uh, commercial commercial saddle that we call close contact saddle. And then but now we are about uh, more than 30 saddles in the market on the same, uh, more or less identical, you know. And, uh, and, um, and also uh, we try to develop other things that the cover, cover for the horse, the blankets, and uh, the bridles, and uh, all the kind of uh, tech that uh, we like to use. And then, uh, so... We, uh, we put that on the market uh, through now through this factory of Luis Diaz. Clearly leading the market, not just with the close contact saddle, but all the other products as well, Neko. Yes, yes. And, and creating yet another product out there that will forever be memorialized under the Pessoa name. But I want to take you way back Neko to the beginning of this and establishing the name Pessoa in the show jumping world. It all began, of course, in Brazil. You were born in 1935, and uh, I believe you started jumping when there were so many military riders, and you were one of the first civilians. Tell us a little bit about your childhood. How did the horses come about, Neko? Were your parents yes. interested? Yes, so, um, on the, on the, around the 42 um uh, 1942 during more or less during the war and um, uh brazil have been involved with this uh on this war and then uh, we used to live in in one uh in one uh, country house outside town with my father that was very close to the cavalry school and then on this time my father was about 35 and I don't know why reason, uh, because the contact with some uh, officers, he uh, became uh, interested on horses and started to ride himself. I was about seven, and then uh, he, well, put me on the horse and tried to to, to make me ride and to follow to follow him. I was was not my cup of tea I didn't like too much. I was uh, scared. And I uh, also that during more or less uh, four years, from seven to 11. And then uh, when I was 11 years old, we moved 
up to to Rio to 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 downtown uh and uh and uh my father bring uh, my horses to the riding club where is the 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 famous show today of um uh Onassis, uh show and then uh and then by this time i lost this uh this uh fight and then uh and then i start to to enjoy riding and uh, and from 12 uh, up to 18 i was riding on this club that is big club i have about 350 400 horses i was riding full time and my father was very enthusiastic and uh he feed me on horses and uh and put me way to compete uh, of course on this time of uh was uh, we never saw that uh I will have the idea to be an international rider in, in, in Brazil on this time in the 50s. It was absolutely amateur sport, and uh, nobody can make a living from horses. Uh, so at that, uh, I have been compete and riding from the 12 to my 18 years old of age. And after that, I start to 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 compete internationally with our national team. I went first to Argentina, Chile, and then Europe. So after that, my taste for this professional beginning to increase. And uh, after being in Europe two or three times and in the United States, uh, that was until the, the end of the 50s. I, I really enjoy, and I said, uh, well, uh, I, I want to be a, a, a professional rider, international rider. So, and then uh, in the 60s, beginning of the 60s, I, I have the opportunity to move to Europe, to Switzerland, with, uh, with uh, a friends that are using to live in there. The wife was a rider. Uh, I'm at the ride, of course, and then uh, I came to Europe with my horses and stayed definitely in Europe. That was in '61. You have two sisters and one brother. Were they at all interested in the horses? Did they ride? With my you? my my brother later on, later on, on the age of uh, 14 or 15, beginning to ride a little bit, and my two sisters not at all, not at all. Now, what was your mother's uh, view of all this, of, of your father encouraging you? Well, to... my mother was um, the um, uh, 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 daughter of an uh, uh, Italian family, immigrates to Brazil, uh, very, very kind of uh, the, the mama, the Italian mama, very, very quiet and fallen what my father uh, planned. And my father was a uh, very interested in sport. He played football. He make a gymnastic, and he was uh, riding, and uh, and he was a kind of very dynamic gentleman. And uh, he was on the real estate business. Uh, so and then, well, that got my my passion. You know, it's uh, uh, so I let's say I have this uh, career, national career, from the beginning of the fifties until sixties. And then uh, 61, I moved to Europe to Switzerland, where I stay eight years. And then uh, this family stopped with the horses uh, uh, because the lady didn't want to continue to ride. And uh, and then I moved to France. And then I start on my own uh, kind of uh, business on uh, riding and bring horses uh, to compete and. Uh, where I stay 12 years in France, I moved to Chantilly because I have a friends there that uh, yeah, used to be a race trainer, Miguel Clement, and that was a great trainer in, in race horses. And uh, and after that, uh, I moved to Belgium to Brussels because uh, we chose to live in one small town, and then uh, uh, we really like Brussels uh, a lot. And then it's very much in the center of uh, Europe. 
and where we stay now for 30 years. So, and then make the 50 years that uh, we have been with the, involved with the horses and uh, international and um, all this career. So going back uh, briefly, if I may, to your childhood again, Neko, where did you go to school? In Brazil, when I was uh, seven, uh, uh, five uh, to, uh, to 12, I was on, my, uh, on this little town. I was in the, on, the, on the primary school. And then when we moved to downtown in Rio, I was continuing uh, as a student uh, from 12 to 17 uh, on my secondary uh, studs. And then, uh, and then by 17, 18, I was not, uh, not uh, interested in following any professional uh, as a, you know, a doctor or a lawyer or so. I was not uh, the, the most brilliant student. I was uh, working a little bit with my father in the, on his business and then also in the advertising business and, uh, and the real estate business. That was the, 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 the only business of my father. And then uh, uh, from 18 uh, to 20, we got uh, all this uh, traveling to Europe and to the United States. So my father was support me. I have good horses, and uh, and then I was uh, something in my standby, you know, to see what uh, what happened. And then uh, in '60, we decided uh, to come to Europe, and then I got married, get my two horses on the boat, and travel to Europe. Well, it's often been said, Neko, that you have done for Brazilian show jumping what Pelé did for football. But who were your role models when you were looking at the sport in the early days of your career? In this time, I was always uh, have a lot of sense of uh, observation, and, and I was always very curious. So from my beginning... I was uh, following the top riders in the, in the 50s. The, the most uh, famous riders uh, was the South America. There was really brilliant riders. Uh, the, the Chile team, the Argentinian, and the Brazilian. In Europe, I was uh, uh, Fritz Stiedemann and uh, already uh, Hans Gunther Winkler. And then notes, and uh, I admire a lot uh, the Dinzeos, Goiwaga, Doriola, and some of the Americans, because the Americans begin on this time, more or less, uh, to move to Europe to compete with Bert Denemity, with Frank Chapeau, Fra- um, 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 Bill Stenklau, Mary, Mary Mears, and Kathy Kuznas, and some others. And then, when I come here to the 60s and, uh, and uh, all the years, I was following these people, you know, and then... Uh, observed them, and then that was my, my example, my idol, all these guys, the Chocomilla, and then, uh, so, and then I, uh, I got a, a more or less in the end, in the middle of the 61, to the end of the 61, I begin to have a success in the top competitions in Europe. I won the Grand Prix in Brussels, and the San Galen, and then I beginning to make part of this family of the top riders in this moment. And then from 62 on, I really, my career has been a very, uh, very success. And then uh, I, I got a really, I adapt my kind of life to, uh, to the show jumping. And then uh, I beginning to, I start to, to learn uh, uh, the dressage because I saw that it was very important to to my career because in Brazil, in this time, I was uh, young and uh, try only to jumping and uh, and then I I I, uh, I got very interesting on the on the on the dressage also and uh, I have the opportunity to meet uh, uh, good people in Germany, uh, the lady, famous lady in this time, Rosemarie Springer. On her trainer, William Fuchs, uh, Schultas, and Bob Gunther, I come friend with these people, and then uh, I develop my my skill on the flat work, and then 
and then also on teaching because I was helping this lady uh, called Givaudan, uh, and then I developed on uh, on on the also and teaching people and uh, following people because it was one of the way to make a living. Uh, I was uh, never very very interesting on 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 the horse dealing, so uh, told my 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 life and the way to the way to uh, to survive was uh, teaching and competing for for the prize money, and uh, and so and then I have been uh, done all these years with the, with the, this idea. In uh, later on, uh, well, I opened from '65, beginning to come riders from Brazil to Europe, uh, like uh, Fernandes, Simões. And then uh, a lot of riders. I think uh, I, uh, I'm talking about a hundred riders from Brazil that uh, that have been uh, moved to Europe, and uh, and now uh, Belgium have been in Brussels uh, have been the place that these people all uh, got established. Uh, now uh, Doda, Rodrigo, uh, Bernardo Alves, Pedro Venice, they are all uh, coming to set on his. Uh, flag in in brussels yeah yes it's quite a roster of international show jumpers but tell us how did you meet your wife regina so and then in this time when i have this invitation and this opportunity to to come to europe that was the end of the 60s it was by the time of the olympic games in rome i was fiance with my actual wife regina and then i have this invitation and I said, okay, I you know I I don't want to uh, to come that along. And then uh, okay, my, my wife was not at all from uh, a horse family. She never rode and never see a horse in her life. And then uh, we decided, and then she agreed to marry. And then uh, we marry in December 60, 19 of December 60, and on fifth fifth uh, of uh, January. We jump on the boat with the horses to come to Europe okay. to join this family of friend of mine in Geneva, where we stay eight years. So she did not have a horsey background. That we bring one horse for her, and she rode a little bit at home, uh, uh, but not have to compete, uh, and uh, just a uh, just kind of a fun uh, uh, flat work and uh, at home uh, with her horse. Well, I want to talk about uh, your horses, Neko, but before we go any further, you did have an interesting nickname when you were back in South America, the Wizard, and now, of course, the world knows you as Neko. What's the story behind those two nicknames? Well, this nickname, this is uh, uh, one of my sisters when I was young, and uh, she uh, she's a little bit older than me, and, uh, and uh, I think... Uh, the story that uh, she had a uh, 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 difficulty to pronounce my name, Nelson, and then uh, and she called me Neko. And then, uh, you know, in Brazil, everybody have a nickname. And then, uh, all right, and then uh, myself, as soon as I, as far that I remember, uh, people call me Neko. Huh? Uh, and then... Uh, uh, never, uh, that's never a uh, change. Well, one of the earliest and most successful horses you ever had, of course, was Grand Geste. Tell us how you found this wonderful partner. Yeah. So when uh, when I got to the plan to uh, to come to Europe, uh, my 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 uh, godfather, that was uh, Count uh, Luciano de la Porta. Uh, I have seen Grandes in Brazil compete with one uh, one officer uh, and compete in the good competition, but it was very very difficult to horse. And then uh, I have the opportunity to jump Grandes in one final of a national championship in the south of Brazil. And then I was uh, very very keen on the horse. And uh, when when I have the invitation to come to Europe. My godfather uh, bought the horse and uh, gave me to me to bring to Europe. He paid $3,000 for him at this time. 
and then I was most of that excited to um, to have this horse and bring him so that uh, he was a part of my bags. Uh, I bring a Grand Jester and one other horse called F F Orofino. And then, and the lady that I was, uh, I was uh, involved with, she got uh, three or four horses, and uh, and I also beginning to ride some of her horses. And after the first year, in this time, we produced in South America, Brazil and Argentina, nice horses. Uh, and then I beginning to bring horses from South America uh, uh, to to Europe. So and then I compete all the sixties. Only exclusively with the South American horses, yeah. And this Grand Jest, on the beginning, was a kind of um, uh, uh, pain on my shoes because I stole my shoes because he was very difficult. But I was insist and uh, and riding him and uh, try things. And sudden, this horse decided really to settle down and became a. Uh, one fantastic horse, and, and then uh, he won for me 44 international Grand Prix, and uh, everywhere, and uh, England, uh, Germany, Aachen, Hamburg, Dusseldorf, uh, Frankfurt, uh, everywhere, and uh, he became a really a uh, jumping machine. He certainly was. What kind of personality was he, Necker? He was uh, 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 by a thoroughbred called um, called Monge Negro that was a thoroughbred uh, uh, with the French uh, with the French uh, blood, a racehorse, and uh, the mother was a Creole or mare, you know, just just as a country horse, one little mare, one fifty two, fifty fifty and fifty one, and uh, then he was a kind of. Uh, uh, really, you know, uh, predestined to be a to be a top horse. It's very sensitive, very spared, very very alive, and uh, uh, very careful. His officer that beginning uh, beginning his career in uh, in Brazil, uh, he was commandant of uh, one of the cavalry regiments in Brazil, and every year. He conducted a charge of cavalry, and he was leading with this horse. So I make this horse absolutely, well, kind of crazy, you know, and excited with that. And uh, and then uh, and then was my my first uh, toy, you know. Uh, and uh, he was uh, he he was very excited, and then uh, he uh, didn't want to to quiet and to 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 to. So I was lunging him a lot, uh, and. Uh, so in the end, the, the horse, I understand, I didn't have at this time so much experience. My godfather, he was an Italian, and he uh, used to live in Rome and knows the Dinzeo very well. And in 61, when I was in Rome with the horse, he arranged one meeting with, the, the, with Raimondo. So he introduced me to Raimondo. Raimundo was just uh, six months before won the Olympic Games in Rome and the World Championship in Venice. And Raimundo agreed to ride the horse and uh, give me some advice. And uh, so uh, uh, Raimundo rode the horse and, <coughs> and he was very disappointed. I said, oh, the horse is very hot and he needs a lot of work, quiet at home, jump in small classes and so And then uh, we see. But it was exactly opposite to what I was using to do because I, I need the horse and the horse it was kind of he was not competitive but uh, well he he was jumping uh, so in the end uh, on the road and uh, the try well something was really the destination of the horse and my career and more or less in June July the horse settled down and beginning to jump wonderful. So, and then, uh, uh, straight away, I won this derby in Hamburg and Hickstead, and, uh, and in 64, uh, the Grand Prix of Aachen. The data was, uh, uh, you know, uh, was just like a, a snowball, you know, more and more, better and better, he got better and better. And then I used him from 61 until 69. And, uh, yeah, and he, this horse, he was uh, a kind of a rock, you know. He never see the veterinary, he never lame, he never sick. He was uh, just uh, with the energy of the, the, the Creole horse, you know, is our cowboy horse, you know. 
How old was he when he retired? We retired him when he was 16, and he lived uh, until 32. Wow, terrific life. Yeah, and he jumped with me from 8 to 16, from 8 to 16, and he jumped nine years with me. Now, what type of horse were you looking for when you came to Europe, Neko, and you set up in Switzerland, as you said, and you were looking for the right type of partner to continue your well, career? Well, you know, on this time for us, uh, the, 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 the warm-blooded horse was not our type of dog. We use uh, and uh, like to ride uh, uh, horses um, almost close to the thoroughbred. And we didn't have the chance to ride too much thoroughbred in Brazil, some ones, but all mixed horse. That was the kind of the Argentina and Brazilian horse. That was the thoroughbred with the, 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 uh, the Criollo. Not, uh, even not uh, the warm blood horse, because uh, in Brazil and Argentina didn't have uh, any mare from, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, European blood. The breeding was exclusive, the thoroughbred with the, with the Criollo. And there was kind of a horse not very big, in between 15.3 uh, and 16.2. Uh, and uh, But uh, with, uh, with uh, a lot of uh, energy and a lot of class, uh, if you see on the Lanay Peak, on this 50 and 60s, you see uh, this horse is... Uh, Discutido, Santa Fe, Grand Jester, Kanguru. Top horse jumping, uh, they make uh, really fewer in, in Europe. And, uh, you know, the Chilean jumping 2 meters 49 with a uh, kind of a thoroughbred uh, and then and so on and so on. You know, it's, um, but unfortunately, our, our breeding was not uh, very organized. And uh, these people let these uh, these kind of uh, stallions go away, and uh, and then when they, they begin to replace that uh, with uh, warm uh, blood uh, by second class, and then uh, we finish our breeding. Take me back to the 50s and 60s, Neko, when you were on the team competing in Olympic Games, European Championships, Pan American Games, and all the medals that you won. Give us a sense of the fond memories of some of those shows. So when, when, I, I, when I joined our team, it was in 56 for the Olympic Games in Stockholm. Our team from the army have been before in 52 in Helsinki, where they have a brilliant first place, individual and a team. Uh, one, of the, one of our uh, members was Coronel Menezes, uh, went to the jump off with uh, Fritz Tiedemann, with the Doriola, and with the, uh, uh, Hector Christ for, and, and uh, Fritz Tiedemann. For the, for the gold medal individual in 52. So in 56, when we came in again, uh, so I was, uh, that uh, was my first, uh, my first trip to, uh, to Europe. So, but uh, we, this time we didn't have uh, the organization. Our horses uh, uh, leaving from Rio to uh, Rio to Stockholm directly, fly, fly. On this time, uh, to cross the Atlantic was 24 hours, and by the time they arrived in Stockholm, the horse was not in good condition. We arrived one week before the games, and then uh, so we we uh, we finished tens and uh, not uh, not so well. So after that, we wait for one trip in Europe. We wait one month. We move to Aachen, and we stay four weeks in Aachen because it was our next show, because uh, instead to begin by small shows and go up to finish in the Olympics, we make it the other way around. We begin from the Olympics, and then we make a trip. So we stand with the horses four weeks in, um, in Aachen, and then in 56, in the CSO of Aachen, with the 22 teams, we won the Nations Cup with only three riders. And, uh, and we uh, against the top Germany team with Winkler, Tiedemann, Meteor, Halla, 
and the whole American and Italian, Raimondo, Piero, Opes, uh, with everybody. Uh, and then we 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 follow on one trip in Europe to London, Dublin, and uh, and Belgium Spa, and so that uh, very very successful. Then we went back to Brazil, and then come back next year again, and then to America in '59, and so on and so on. Yes, of course, uh, the 1956 Melbourne Olympics could not hold the equestrian events because of quarantine regulations, which is... Exactly, exactly. That was uh, Stockholm, these games, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, being the stylist that you were and the known for your classical style, Neko, I'm curious as to whether you preferred the first round and the derby courses which you became a master of, winning so many... Or did you enjoy just as much going at speed? No, it's, uh, when I jumped in my first derby, it was in Hamburg in 61. And then I I, start, I jumped three horses in the derby. I've never been jumping uh, competi uh, competition and banks and all these things. I was in Hamburg. For me, I was absolutely surprised to see that. Mm -hmm. And I started with three horses, Spartaco, Grandest, and uh, one medium, uh, very medium horse, Orfeo Negro. And, uh, <coughs> and I have uh, no idea. When I saw, when I saw this uh, Hamburg Derby, I, uh, I opened my eyes just uh, as big as a... Uh, 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 and then I said, my God, what, what is this? And uh, I have a photo with Grandjest and Spartaco, but uh, not a very bad round, I didn't remember. But I was clear round with Orfeo Negro. And I went to the jump off, and I finished second. Raimondo Dinze won with Posilipo, 61. So and then I come back on 62, and then I won in 62. Uh, and Raimondo was second, and I won with Grand Jest. And then in 63, I won again. Uh, uh, um, and in 63 was the year that my father was coming, and I finished first and second. Now I the only two clear rounds. And all the story of the Hamburg Derby. And after that, I, Hamburg became really my competition. Now, at the beginning of the year, I was only thinking Hamburg. I, was, uh, I said, look, the Grand Prix of Aachen, that is, uh, is not my cake, is uh, really too much. And then, uh, uh, so I, and then I begin really enthusiastic with the, with the, with the, the derby of Hamburg. And then after 63, Douglas Bond invited me to go to Hickstead. They say, look, I have my show. It's a new show. You, you must come as winning of Hamburg. Or you come to jump in, in Hickstead. And I went to Hickstead. And then uh, Hickstead was even more difficult than Hamburg. I say, my God, what are you doing here? And then I won again with Grand Jess. You did. 63. And then I became uh, really absolutely fan of uh, derbies. Né? And uh, all my career, I won 20 derbies eh? and uh, seven in Hamburg. I started again in 65, and then I was in Milano. And then, uh, well, and then uh, all time for me, uh, the, the derby was, uh, uh, I don't care. Every, any horse I have, I make them jump in derby. <laughs> and then uh, I won the Hamburg seven times, and then uh, the Hickstead three times, and uh, Milano, and uh, Eindhoven, and, uh, well, uh, that's make me 20, 20 hours in total. Yes. But I was really enjoy to jump in the, to jump in the derbies, and in this time of the, 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 the sport, we used to have uh, uh, banks, and uh, and I was uh, really keen on, on jumping the banks. Didn't didn't me uh, afraid at all. And uh, and in Brazil, we don't have uh, in this time. Even now, we don't have uh, derbies. But I was riding a lot in the on the cavalry school in Rialengo, where we be the Olympic Games in 2016. And there was a lot of natural, natural fence. That is, is one place called Virisino, is a, a one place that the army used for maneuver of the, the soldiers. And, 
<laughs> and uh, the cavalry school is just by this this thing, this place. And uh, we have been used to riding a lot on these uh, natural, in the natural things. And I uh, know these are really big, deep uh, banks. And uh, and actually, when we came, when I came to jump in in Europe, I was uh, I jumped in very well. These uh, these competitions in Ireland with the two banks. I don't know if you remember. Yes, I do. I jump in that perfect, yes. perfect. You know, <laughs> and and it was very special, very special banks. Uh, these two banks in um, in, uh, in 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 Ireland. You know, they they call the Irish Bank, and then the 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 FEI stop, and then they 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 destroy uh, this this uh, these banks. And there was a seriously good bank at the Kickstead Derby too, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, and then it was really this one was uh, absolutely, absolutely famous. You know, it was, it was quite complicated. She was very, very hot, and then uh, the horse sometimes lost the balance and uh, fell. Uh, always uh, have uh, some accidents in in in, in Hickstead. And then later on, I have a little time with uh, no couple of years that. Uh, I didn't have a really good winner of uh, Hamburg, of Derby and Hamburg. And also, uh, Hamburg became uh, really very, very famous shows. And everybody, every year, uh, riders go to Hamburg, like uh, Eddie Mackin and uh, Alvin. And uh, and I didn't have really top horses to to win the Derby. I have been a lot, a lot. And I think I was place about more than 20 times in Hamburg, second, third, fifth, tens, and so. And then comes the time of Vivaldi, <laughs> that was in 90, in the 90s. And then I won with Vivaldi three, three, three straight away, uh, back to back in 93, 94, 95. Well, no, 92, 93, 94 with Vivaldi. And then in 1960, 96 with Vivaldi again in, in Hickstead. Yes, how did you find Vivaldi? Where did he come from? So uh, Vivaldi coming on the time that uh, I used to uh, to ride and help ID that uh, we have been uh, and we are very very good friends and for 20 years I uh, I have been uh, very close to to ID Howdy uh, uh, and uh, and uh, ID her brother is Max that uh, you remember him. Yes, of course. Uh, he was uh, always deal with the Irish horses, and uh, and then I begin to ride in uh, Irish horse by the time of uh, the time I stay with Heidi, and then uh, Vivaldi was uh, uh, Max horse, and he jumping with him uh, championships and so, and then uh, I, I bought from Max. And then also Special Envoy and Town Boy and, uh, and a lot of Irish horses. Yeah. And I really enjoy to ride the, 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 the Irish horse. Yeah. It was really my, my type of horse. Yeah. Suited your temperament? Yeah, with, you know, light and the horse with good mounts. And, uh, and we've never been so keen on the, on the warm blood horses, you know, the Germany. And, uh, but so in the end, the Irish... Finish. They don't breed in better horses anymore. South America finished, and then it was necessary to move uh, to uh, to the German and then to the Dutch horses. Yeah. I want to talk about your temperament, Neko, because clearly, you know, your success has been based on being a very patient and classical horseman. What do you, though, perceive to have been your greatest strengths? So, so always as a recommendation of um of, uh, of my father my father was not a great horseman you know he is his amateur rider but he always he always said observe observe looking observe he bring me to when i was a kid 14 years old he bring me to chile just to observe and uh, and see the these famous riders on this moment and uh, and then after uh on the 60s when I was in company with uh, with the, the uh, with the Brazilian riders uh, Ferreira and uh, Menezes, my father said, observe them, observe them. So when I come to Europe, that's what happened with me. I was observing the, the the great riders, uh, uh, the different school in this time, you know? 
the Italians with Raymond and Piero, the Germany, the Winkler, Schocke Müller, Doriola, and then um, and I, I was I was very curious and I observed a lot, and then I tried to learn on the, uh, a bit of dressage on this dressage table, and uh, and then uh, and after after that straight away on the straight. I I have the, the, the opportunity to meet um, Bert Denemity and the American writer that became a very good friend. Kathy Kuzda was one of my my great friend. And uh, when she was not with the team, she always come to our our stable where I have been. And uh, with uh, with uh, with Bert, I observe a lot his organization, his patience, and and uh, and uh, his knowledge. To conduct a team, and so for me, it was the, the great uh, train uh, of uh, all time. And then after that, you know, I I, I, I learned, and and then with this Garajas Ross really teach me the patient because it was the only way. He was so so crazy and so excited that the only way was to be patient with him. And then, um, well, uh, you know, all these things, all these things together. And uh, I, I begin to, to 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 compete and see a lot of the Americans, and then I say that that is is my way of riding, you know, that is on um, this style uh, that uh, the, the Americans uh, create because uh, before Bird the Nemity, you know, uh, the, the style the style of the American uh, rider was completely different. The time of jumping uh, this Barney Ward and uh, some other riders. Uh, Sammy Brooks, and then uh, was one one style absolutely really old fashioned. <clears throat> but uh, uh, Bert bring it to, to the American, the European way of riding because uh, on the on the before the war, uh, the the these these countries from uh, east uh, Hungarian and uh, Poland and so they have a wonderful way of riding. <clears throat> And that's what bring uh, <clears throat> bring to the American the knowledge of uh, of uh, bird anonymity. And then I, I I really adapt because I have a, a different, a completely different style and a way of riding. And then uh, I really try to copy this uh, this school of uh, of riding and uh, with possibility. And uh, with the interest in on on uh, on riding on the flat uh, and uh, with the, on the dressage knowledge of the Germany, né? and uh, so and then from the let's say on the 60s, I more or less make my my own style that I think now is a little bit international because in this time we have the Italians that are right completely different than the Germany. The Germany completely different of the French, and uh, and the English very very natural. That I also always I appreciate a lot. You know, when they come with these riders, Alan Oliver, Teddy Edgar, and uh, and uh, Ted Williams. Uh, I became a very good friend of Ted Williams. I got to use it to stay a lot with him in England. So then I learn, I learn a lot with this uh, these people to. How to keep a horse and uh, uh, you know to, to the, the management of uh, the really natural because uh, uh, nobody better than an uh, uh, old Englishman to know about horses. Uh. So and then all this mix that uh, making me I make my little bit my my own school and uh, that I think now is a little bit very international because uh, we don't see too much. Too much difference in between riders anymore uh, that we o could observe in the 60s and uh, and 70s. Yeah. Well, obviously, as a competitor, you competed against all the top names in the sport in that wonderful golden for the for the three generations. You know, yes. I, I saw I, I, I my first competition I won uh, and I beat uh, the famous uh, Colonel Welling with Fox Hunter in Ireland. <laughs> And from this time, you know, is uh, and then uh, all the generation of the the Germany, uh, uh, Tiedemann, Vlinka, Schokomulus, and then coming, you know, um, 
and Wildfang and so on and so on, the Italians also, and then the French, and then the other generation after that, the 80th generation, and then now, I, uh, because I was competing a lot in the, in the 90s also with, uh, with the, the, the new, uh, the new gener the generation of Rodrigo, huh? uh, Eddie Mackin, uh, well, Eddie mm -hmm. Mackin was a little bit before, but uh, the Irish team that was, and then the, the generation of uh, Rodrigo and then uh, the people that uh, are top riders now. Yes, and I, I'm curious though, when you were competing, Neko, were you ever a nervous? Did anything ever intimidate you before a big competition? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember, um, because um, uh, the most important thing that uh, when I, I compete, because it was uh, the, 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 the price money or the winning of the, 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 the competition was, uh, the, was my only way, only way of life, you know, to, to, to win my life and, uh, and to make, uh, to survive. So uh, always I have a depression because uh, I, uh, <clears throat> since from the beginning, uh, I, I never been employed by somebody, you know, I was writing by, for myself. And then, uh, and then it was uh, really necessary to jump in fences clear. <laughs> and then, uh, and my federation, my country, never helped us at all, you know, myself, and nobody, you know, uh, our federation is poor. Don't have they? Have, they don't have uh, uh, any substantial uh, uh, money to uh, to help riders. Uh, so, um, and then that's uh, uh, put making me a lot of pressure. Yeah. Well, clearly, Rodrigo has inherited your genes to be the horseman and sportsman that he he is. What was your most enduring messages to him when he was learning to be a horseman? Yeah. So when he was beginning to ride, he was about six, that was beginning with, like every kid, beginning with the pony or the pony club. And my house in, in France, in this time, I have a little bit small arena that was an uh, old tennis court that we changed and we make a little arena. That uh, Rodrigo have his ponies and uh, riding in Chantilly. After that, uh, we moved to Belgium. I uh, have Brussels was in '81, uh, and also he continued he continued uh, to ride uh, ponies. Uh, uh, and I have the pony. Uh, we live in in town in the in the area of Aucle, uh, where I have a, a lot of riding clubs. So. Uh, well, I have always keeping uh, one or two ponies for him on this uh, place. He, he was never very much in the stable because my the stable was always a little bit far from from the town. And then, um, but uh, when when I f more or less uh, understand that uh, Rodrigo was talent to ride, and then uh, I uh, beginning uh, to put on him exactly. Uh, uh, this way of uh, have a good style and uh, and uh, behave uh, as a modest person and uh, and uh, try to work hard as possible. And for him, on this time, when he was beginning, when he was about 15, was my great time. Uh, I have a lot of horses in the stable, so he have this opportunity to ride and uh, to choice uh, the horses that uh, suit him. Uh, and um, and I always try to to gather him on the horse that uh, uh, some old ones and uh, and uh, Rodrigo when he was a uh, junior, 17, <coughs> the year of his 17, he rode the world championship in Stockholm in '90 with uh, with the special envoy, and uh, six months before he jumped into his first Nations Cup in Rome. With one of our old horse called Muerte Chandon Imperial, that was exactly, and six months after we gave him a special envoy and we competed in Stockholm. And then he was <clears throat> the best rider of our team. I rode Vivaldi, and we have two other, two other guys from Brazil. And Rodrigo finished nine with a special envoy. And then uh, I was always take care. <clears throat> Always take care 
to have him on the proper horse, the right horse, safe, and uh, to give him the chance to uh, to develop a, a good riding. What was your message to him, though, Neko? Because clearly you wanted him to be a successful rider, but as a horseman. Well, that was um, the first is um, because uh, uh, straightway he was a successful rider. That was first on his personality uh, to be modest, uh, don't have a big head, and uh, and the, the discipline, and then uh, respect the horses, and uh, try to be uh, really a horseman. That uh, I think he uh, he 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 adapted his character, and then uh, he really became. Uh, a, a, a really a, a horseman, and after that we we come in the era of the sponsor, and uh, to have this notion of uh, you need a sponsor, and then uh, you know, the owner uh, have a good uh, good relation with uh, your owners and uh, with uh, with your sponsor, and I think is one thing that uh, Rodrigo really do very well because uh, he always. Have a very, <clears throat> very good relationship with his sponsors, a commercial sponsor like uh, IMG before Loropiana and the Moet de Chandon, and now Rolex. Hmm? Yes. He, uh, he he do that really well. He certainly did. Now, when you look back on your career, Neko, which accomplishments are you most proud of? Well, and then um, I think. Um, you know that I was the first international rider in Europe to turn professional in '74. Uh, here in Europe, uh, all the riders was uh, have uh, the, the status of an uh, amateur, and uh, just to have some professional riders in America, but they never come to to Europe to compete because uh, the shows was for for the amateur. Yeah, actually, in the American team, they never bring. Um, uh, Barney Ward or, or, or Rodney Jenkins or, or these writers. And then in 74, I begin to to have the difficulty of finding um, owners and uh, find, uh, uh, found to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to compete and uh, to, uh, to, uh, to keep your horses. And I always, I was a little bit... Uh, when I was young, I was uh, working with uh, with advertise, and then I was following a lot of the race the race uh, cars uh, competitions, and then uh, my dream was uh, you know to make uh, the ride uh, exactly what they they do in, in race cars, and in '74 I I get contact with uh, with uh, these Moëtte Chandon people. And I offer in this in this time I have the luck to have a, a, a few horses good from a family in in, uh, in Geneva, and the Moëtte Chandon uh, take that opportunity, and then we we open up, and I I change my my status to professional with Moëtte Chandon. That's making me out of the four Olympic teams, four Olympic competitions after 76, 80, 84. And uh, 88, and then the the Olympic International Committee uh, have the decision to open all the sport, all the Olympics to the professionals, uh, to the, the professional sportmen. It was in 88 in Seoul, where the uh, the American begins to bring the the dream team in basketball and football and so on and so on. So and that was the the, the survival of the. the 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 quality of the sport in the Olympic Games. Did you have any favorite shows, though, Neko, of all the showgrounds you competed in? For me, it was uh, uh, Aachen in Hamburg. That was... Uh, and also one show in France called La Ball. La Ball, yes. Yeah, that I won six times the derby in La Ball. Yeah, absolutely record also. So and then this three show was my my really my preferred shows. Uh, Hamburg, Aachen, Labon. 
I know this is a difficult question, Neko. Was there any one class that stands out in your memory today? Well, I think that is um, this uh, this uh, the first uh, my first uh, winning in in Aachen in '64 when I won the Grand Prix in Aachen, and then in '96 with Vivaldi. That when I won the Derby, I was 64. And uh, no, I was 61. I was 61, and I just came for a, a quite a hard, uh, quite a hard, hard problem uh, a year before. And uh, and then, uh, well, uh, yeah, actually, I remember that uh, the 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 uh, by recommendation of the doctors, and I said, look, I begin to ride again, and then. Uh, and I, I use this uh, this watch that control your your heartbeat. And they said, okay, you also should never go over 170, 165, uh, and 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 we can see on my on my on my competition on the video uh, that I sometimes I look at my watch to see if your heart was in order. <laughs> <laughs> And that was, uh, I remember, it was uh, uh, really fun. Yeah. How would you like to be remembered, Neko? Would it be as a horseman or a sportsman? Oh, uh, well, as a horseman, yeah. As a horseman. This is, uh, I have a, I, I, and, uh, and my love for the horses uh, are really big because uh, I stop uh, competing and then, uh, and uh, I, I really don't miss competition at all. I breed horses and I teaching people, and um, and I have uh, and I still keep the same interest as before. So, how many horses would you have at home? You mentioned you have a small breeding operation, don't you? Yeah, it's small. Now, now I have. Uh, oh, I produce about um, uh, on the last ten years. Uh, actually, Rodrigo won today with one of our horses called Baluchi. He won 10 competitions this year in Palm Beach. Uh, and uh, that was my first horse that I, uh, he's 12 now. And then I think I, we have a producer with the mares that uh, we have been using competition. And we have stallions, Galobert and Canturo. And <coughs> we produce about uh, 15 to 20 horses. And... Uh, now I have one really excellent horses by Balube also. His name is Born to Win. Rodrigo have Baluchin, and then I have some other ones called Pluto, and then uh, well, we've got a, a good group of horses. Yes. We hope one uh, one will be a top Grand Prix Grand horses uh, one day, and uh, but a uh, really, really really small operation uh, just for fun. Just for fun, as indeed it has all been, and Neko, I want to thank you so much for being my guest this week. It's been a real pleasure. Okay, then I hope to see you sometime. Absolutely. All right, Chris. Thank you so much, Neko. Thank you. Bye-bye. You can find out more about the full range of Pessoa products by visiting their website at PessoaSaddles.com. Please join me again next time when we visit the life of another equestrian legend.